In my lab, um, we're really interested in the relationship between form and function in animals, particularly mammals and largely big carnivorous animals. So we're looking at how the anatomy of animals relates to how they function, both in the present and then what we like to do is then move into the past and look at fossil mammals and better understand their function in their ecosystems. Paleontology, even though it's a relatively old science, has just changed tremendously in the last uh, two or three decades. Uh, all kinds of new um, approaches in terms of understanding the evolutionary relationships of animals, both um, using parts of their bones and characteristics of their bodies, but as well using DNA, which has actually allowed us to then better infer relationships among extinct animals as well. And sometimes we can even get DNA from extinct species if they haven't been gone for that long, say less than 50,000 years or so. So there's that whole aspect. Then there's the technology. There, we've borrowed from medicine, we've borrowed from engineering. So we're using high resolution CT scanning to look at the insides of skulls of both fossil animals and living animals and reconstruct their brains and their eyes and <laughs> their ears and understand so much more about their behavior by being able to just actually visualize the insides of their skulls without cutting into the skulls themselves, right, and destroying the fossils. And with magnetic resonance imaging, MRI, we can similarly look at living animals, make correlations with fossil animals. It's just been a huge explosion in image technology that's really advanced paleontology. We borrow from engineering as well, so learning about uh, ideas that engineers use things called finite element analysis. They use that to estimate the the strength of a structure, such as a bridge or a building, and how it would respond under a load, such as a certain number of cars or a wind or whatever. So we have borrowed that same technology and applied it to the bones of animals and the skulls of animals to ask how they respond to the loads that they usually, that they actually incur on these structures by either walking or running or chewing or fighting whatever. So we can use those tools, but this means we have to learn <laughs> about engineering <laughs> and we have to push ourselves sometimes to acquire new skills that um, we didn't have before. Paleontology people often think of as an old science because we're studying the past and because it has been done for a long time, but I think it's actually more important now than it has ever been because we're entering a time of global climate change and biodiversity loss and we're entering a time where we're going to have new states of being on the planet, that is, you know, warmer climates than we've ever seen, um, coming more quickly than we've ever seen, changes in ocean chemistry that haven't been seen in a long time. And in fact, the only place that you can see these kinds of changes is by going into deep time, going back 40 million years, maybe 100 million years, and looking at the fossil record, and we can study the impact of the same kind of climate change that we're seeing now, and the same kind of changes that are happening in the oceans. We can see what happened in the past, and that's bound to give us some information about how to help with what's happening now and in the future. The new Life Sciences building is really exciting because I'm in one of these large sort of group labs, and there are five different um, professors uh, and their labs it, together in the same space. And it's a large space, so it's <laughs> and it's going to be exciting because I have in with um, people both in my department uh, who are working on DNA, evolutionary studies using DNA, uh, another a marine conservation biologist who's um, studying genetic gene flow and adaptive radiations and evolutionary radiations in the sea, and uh, another professor from physiological sciences who's interested in sort of neurobiology of um, various uh, pathways, and especially in birds. So we, our students are going to interact, and I think it's very likely that there will be some new collaborations that are a result of this. Thank you.